drills they've picked in the openers consistently, and then what do they ban to maybe change how that game progresses from game two? Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, the series is tied 1-1 here at the Grand Finals. Let's get ready for the next one. PSG LGD versus OG. Grand Finals, game three. Game three, OG now looking to regain momentum as PSG LGD dismantled them in the second game, but it could go either way. Both of these teams have proven that time and time again, both against each other and of course against several other top opponents. We started discussing the draft a little bit. What goes through, of course, Earthshaker continuing to be a high contention pick and bam. But then we also have, I mean, I think you were right, SVG, the no-tail hero pool. How does that pan out? And MSS, I expect uh, LGD doesn't have to change much of that. They'll continue to target that early on. I mean, they'll probably uh, keep the same bands. The, just, oh, they ban the band Spectre. Right? Take out the Spectre. Spectre one. Play, yep. Yep. That's understandable. Well, I, I think it's, uh, you know, LGD looks at it as, you know, against the Spectre, you know, there's not really a, a carry matchup right now. There are very few, I should say, that Spectre loses. Your, your only hope yeah. against the Spectre feels like you just have to win the lanes hard. Yeah, I mean, there is, there is this Terror Blade. Yes, and, which uh, Ame plays yes. exceptionally. And I think the other one is Void. I think Void can yeah. do well against Spectre in the late game, and especially if you do something like a Void Elder Titan, for example. Sure. We've seen Elder Titan being picked up a little more in this, this tournament. Extremely hard scaling support. Huge team fight, right? So that is something example LGD could look to go into if they left the Spectre in the pool, but honestly that hero is just terrifying to play at. It gets on your back line, it's killing your supports, now you have to take a numbers fight. Right. It's very challenging. Now, one of the things I love about TI is that the, the, the final day always feels like it has its own meta. Earthshaker was picked <laughs> Earthshaker was picked 11 times in the first 180 games in this tournament, and it's been picked four out of the last five games between these two I teams mean, and it, banned the other one. Now it feels like if you don't get the Shaker, exactly. you're on the back foot, right? <laughs> Whereas Venge, right, most picked and banned That's heroes throughout true. the tournament, not touched today, gotten through all the drafts. Yeah, I mean, we even mentioned it here on the panel in that second game. Does OG pick it up to get some of the flexibility they need? And no, it's just overlooked. I mean, when it comes to the finals, like, like it, the meta comes down to the two teams playing the game. Absolutely. Right? Like, the heroes they share, they become, like, the priority becomes higher. And you, you'll feel d different, like, priority to bad picks. I mean, th this draft is a battle between LGD wanting to get what they want, OG wanting to get what they want, and how do those two collide? Yeah, it doesn't have as much to do with the other 16 teams and what they wanted in this tournament. LGD themselves taking out the Enchantress. Yeah, and in place of the Silencer that they've been targeting against No Tail. So I wonder if that's going to play a role here as we get ready for the first pick soon. So the Silencer is an interesting hero in this tournament and also for No Tail because it's not one of those traditional like lane securing, lane stomping type of five positions, but the team fight team that fight. that hero gives you yeah. is insane. And it, and, just, and it disrupts the other teams. Yes, team exactly. Fight. And people have been figuring out lane combinations that do very well. We saw a lot of like Weaver Silencer, right. for example. You can, this hero can be very strong in lane, not to say he's weak, but right. it's not, it's not as if you're first picking an, an Ogre or a Chen where your game plan is very clear, right? Yeah. I mean, speaking of the Chen, you know, he got through. Yeah. Oh, you're LG, right. LGD so battle, right? Yeah. So to me, it seems like LGD, they want to give something that they feel OG will take for sure, yeah. and then have a game plan against it. And this is something LGD likes to do a lot, um, because it's a reliable strat, right? This team has gone to the Grand Finals playing certain heroes. They're probably not going to give up on them if you have a good game plan against them. You can go into the draft in a very solid and predictable wow. position. <laughs> Finally, goes. coming up the ranks and now getting banned out in the first phase. Earthshaker, no more in game three. Does that mean somebody somebody has to pick Ogre, right, so we can all clap? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the clapping never stops. I almost wonder if the Shaker is also related to the Silencer being in the, in the pool. Because a lot of oh, yeah. teams and players really don't like playing Earthshaker into Silencer. You even saw some people like Yaps are rushing this Ags just so like you can get in and out of the fight. So if OG feels like LGD is going to take a Silencer first pick, for example, they don't want to be stuck in the position where we don't really want to take Shaker into Silencer, but then we don't want to give them Silencer and Shaker. So that could be where that ban's coming okay. from. That's why it's banned, folks. Okay. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, I see. It's because the uh, Draw Ranger. Yeah, Draw Ranger, exactly. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. All right. And, and, and now... 
the, like kind of block pixel, right? Yep. I picked this PL, that's good against draw. But let's see if uh, LGD cares. It, you know? It's good against the draw, but that matchup is statistically a lot more even head to head than you'd yeah. think over the past year or so, just because the draw can just win the lane so hard. I mean, I think draw strats in general are. They're just stronger and easier to execute right. than a PL strat, just overall, because your, your lineup is always going to synergize. You're always going to have tower push. You're always going to have objective taking. The PL doesn't necessarily give you that on its own, but he he scales against the draw lineup, right? Yeah. yeah it's just the game is also like way faster, right? Like mm -hmm. before the PL can come online. No, that's exactly right. You look at you look at in this tournament, uh, before 40 minutes, PL is 9 and 12. After 40 minutes, he's 10 and 5. Yeah. All right, the drought this time not being banned out by OG, so still in. Does PSGLGD take it for themselves? I think you do. <laughs> if I were LGD, <laughs> I think you know, just, just, you, you just straight up first phase? I think you just take it into the counters almost. It, I mean, it, it almost sounds too bold, but the thing about it is, if you're playing for this lane dominance, Drow is one of the best heroes to, to set up your other two lanes to do well. You almost never care what happens in the Drow lane. Like, as long as she get levels and your other two lanes are winning with the aura, you're pretty happy. So I think they're seriously considering it. I mean, it's a hard take to pick their into PL and Chen, right? Like, it almost right. seems crazy. Yeah. But they do have this Weaver, and Weaver can also be a, a four position with Drow. Yeah. So if they feel like the Drow is going to set their lanes up for a strong enough position where this PL will never come online, it's something to consider. PSG. Okay. okay. Take the vent. There you go. More than likely an ex-Nova hero, and that, that's another uh, player that I feel like we don't talk about nearly nearly often enough yeah. on LGD. Like, ex-Nova has been throughout the season probably the best technical five-position laning support. He makes Ame's lanes so easy. For sure. I mean, he's he's an absolute monster in yeah. the game. I mean, I've watched many of this guy's replays, taken many notes. I, mean, even I still have then, much to learn. <laughs> I mean, even back then when he was playing on WG Unity, oh, that yeah. guy was like one of the best players on the team. I mean, Ex Nova and Afu were like two of the the biggest subs to come out of that yeah, region, yeah. right? And I mean, kudos to him. It's it's never easy for a player to leave his region, go into another one, play on a team that you know you don't know what to expect, and he's showing up huge on the big stage. Yeah. At this point, is OG continuing to be concerned about the draw at all? Then, or are they comfortable with the picks they have, and that's good enough for them? Oh. I think at this point you're you're pro maybe you ban it, but it's kind of like all right. If they didn't take it there, they're, they're probably not, not going to take it. But I but they got they locked down the one support in the game that's maybe like the best with Draw Ranger in the Vengeful. The the synergy between the Draw Ranger and the Vengeful Spirit, right? It it, it just makes that damage spike carry on so much longer. I actually think it's a mixed bag. I think sometimes okay. the Venge with Draw, you get caught in a position where you end up with. Too many single target heroes, yeah. not enough team sure. fight, ah. not enough backup. You go to push this tower and the Venge is giving you more damage, but if they run at you as five, is you'd rather have maybe like an undying tombstone or you know some some frontliner, some some bulk, some team fight. You see a lot of teams pick, for example, like Brewmaster with Drow, right? Yeah. It's not a you wouldn't think like, well, what does Brewmaster do with Drow or <laughs> but he gives you the control and team fight you need. And I, th I think OG have pretty much said, all right, pick drop. We dare you yeah, with yeah. this Winter Wyvern pick. I mean, Venge also offers something that Drow does as well, right? It's damage amp for your team. Exactly. So maybe LGD's thinking like, you know, this Venge is already going to give us a little bit of what Drow gives. We don't need to go too overboard. Well, I, I, am, I am on board. This is something Kyle and I have, have debated a lot. I, when it comes to damage amp, I am on board with the more the merrier. I think there's, when you go for a damage amp strat, there's no such thing as just, just all in As on long it. as you have that team type control. Yeah. Well, PSG LCD using a lot of their time in the past pick and then this one as well. Perhaps considering that same question on do they still commit to it or do they start to spread out what their team has? I mean, they also need to decide like what the uh, PL answer they want to pick, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, OG banned the left hand, which is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, that's a that's a maybe class. It is, it is, it is. <laughs> and we saw them go to that earlier in this tournament. They might they might end up picking it. Wow. It, so guys, this is something I've wanted to ask the two of you about. <laughs> You're picking Phoenix into PL with several of the classic Phoenix counters still in the pool as well. So you look at Lena, Ursa, I mean, so I, many players I fully expect there. Lena to come out here on the fourth. Yeah. 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 OG, OG <laughs> will first phase this year if they see a Phoenix. <laughs> um, it would make sense. It's one of the best egg killers. The Peel is a very strong egg killer, but the thing to remember with Phoenix is if this hero is playing four, he's less worried about the egg going off because he's going to get higher levels than a five. He's going to get the higher egg levels, and he's 
this hero's spell, other spells are also insane. Yes. He has a GPM talent, he has a, a heal slash high damage nuke. They're all long range spell casting abilities. You can do a lot of work with all these spells that you might not even need the egg to win the fight just because of how much damage this hero does. I mean, you see teams uh, doing this more and more often. Like, they, they pick these heroes that, like, into their counters, right? Because it yeah. gives what their lineup needs, pretty much. And, you know, Phoenix is what they need. They need some AoE, team fight, you know, CC. Absolutely. I mean, I, I, I feel like this is the most draft dependent TI ever that we've had. If you look two or three years ago, like, like 70 30 out drafts were so rare, and there's the Lena pick, as we yeah. talked about. At this TI, it feels like half the games on the main stage have been like 70 30 out drafts. It's, it's very difficult. So this TI, there's a lot of picks where if you get that last pick or even the fourth and fifth like combo with a ban, yep. it's extremely hard to answer some of these heroes. And we've seen them time and time again, right? The Broodmother, the Alchemist, the Huskar, the Meepo, Drow Ranger. Th these heroes all require a lot of heroes to be able to deal with them. And if you get them in the later stage, it can be very difficult. What do you guys think about it? The other thing I like about the Lena is it matches up well. If, if LGD were looking toward the Terror Blade, which is still in the pool, matches fairly, fairly well against that hero. Hey, it's a nice pick for them because it's also kind of flexible. They can put it mid depending on what matchup LGD picks. Um, or they'll just put it on Jarex. And I think if they oh, do yeah. that, if they do We've that, seen three Wyvern, right? Yeah, they, yes. they, would, they would put Seb on Wyvern and they'll have the Wyvern Lena lane, which is also very good in the game. You have this Wyvern ult that sets up this Lena stun. Like the team fight is pretty insane. Okay, uh, assuming here that LGD are going to ban the Bloodseeker? It's between the Bloodseeker yeah. and the Ursa, right? Yeah. Um, okay. A lot of ALK teams want to get this Ursa out of the pool because they feel like it's the one hero mid where the lane's very difficult to play for the Alchemist, and then a steamrolling Ursa who gets an early Roshan that ALK can't contest yeah. can kind of take over the map. But yeah, the Bloodseeker, LGD, obviously, they have picked the Bloodseeker into the ALK, so they have some respect <laughs> for that counter, right? Yes. Uh, it's a, I, it is the only time I can remember at TI that I've seen a level 10 against a level 5 mid. That was, yeah, that was a showing from PSG LGD. Hey, OG also has the, the Monkey King, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They, have a, they have a lot of options there now. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, the Monkey, I mean, it's very, very similar against the out. Yeah, it's a hero that relies on stacks. You can force him out of the lane, and then when he goes to jungle, you've chase. seen time and time again, this Thompson Monkey King, he will follow you to the jungle. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You are not safe. <laughs> OG Ben Jug, huh? It's not a hero we've seen a lot of at Dude. this tournament, and it's not necessarily even the best matchup against something like PL in the late game. You can kind of get there with like some Battle Fury, Mjolnir, uh, Blade Fury talents, but... Ultimately, you can also get kited, especially with like Wyvern, BKB piercing spells, things like this. I mean, to be fair, it was one of Ami's best heroes last season, mm -hmm. but he hasn't shown it nearly as much. Maybe their top is like one of the few heroes that can like sustain through this spam lane, this lead, like lead a Wyvern lane. Okay. You know, with the healing ward, and he, at like some point in the game, this Alchemist is just going to siege high ground, right? And they're going to have healing ward behind this guy. Yeah. But maybe, maybe, maybe this is what they're thinking. And there's your monkey. That was a very good call. Yeah. yeah. Taking that out, they've had to deal with it earlier. So there is the Ursa left in the pool, yep. um, but I don't know if OG's lineup looks amazing with it. I will say it's a decent Ursa game in the sense of he's good against the Alk in the game and he's good against this Phoenix Egg if they want another killer. But looking at their lineup, they already have ways to kill the Egg right now. Uh, yeah, and there's the so master. sick. That is such a I was actually wondering if they would take it on that Phoenix slot because we've seen, for example, this, this Venge Brew lane is something Liquid play, for example. This lane's actually decently strong. They might even throw the Phoenix down there depending on what they want to play 4-5 because yeah. Venge Weaver is also a strong lane. You were talking about that from, from the middle of the draft and it, it matches up so well against some of those melee laning counters yep. against the Alchemist that can just take the Bloodseeker to your side of the fight. The Morphling! Oh, Oh my god. I forgot about that Thompson. Oh my god. <laughs> I forgot Both Thompson and yes. Anna will play yes. this morph. Yeah. So. Who's it going to be, do you think? Uh, it's it's going to be Thompson mid, right? Yeah. Mid morph is a dog. Yeah, I think it depends. It, like, if they want to play this morph as more of a scaling morph, I, I, I like Anna, Anna morph take it. Thompson. Yeah. You think Anna yeah. will play mid? I think when Thompson plays this morph, it's more of like this tempo controller. You go like yeah. Treads, Dragon Lance, running in there, stealing spells, almost like a Rubik or yeah, something. More like, yeah, a, yeah, like a team yeah. fighter. Yeah. Uh -oh. Not to say he can't play a hard carry morph as well. It's just different style. All right. Well, some exciting picks once again as we get ready for game three. We have a chance here from Pastorel with Casey. Hello. Hello again. We meet again. Again. How are you feeling about this draft compared to the last time we chatted? Oh, it was a disaster last one. It's like 
the conca pick like I saw it too late and we already banned and oh it was hard we lost three lanes yeah it happens from time to time but now no definitely is better speaking of bans why the juggernaut ban want the juggernaut ban but well, you are thinking about like the heroes it's hard to tell you know uh, but it's, it's hard to tell because I don't want to give information. Quite all right. That might be the smart move on your part. I'm to be, be honest. honest, man, it's, it's hard to answer these questions like without revealing. So I don't know. I don't want you to reveal anything that you don't feel comfortable. Because he makes battle fury and hits everyone. It's a good answer. Sure, I'll take it. Pretty, pretty good. <laughs> good luck to you. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Rell, answering what he can as we go into game three. The series is tied 1-1 in this grand final, and we'll return to Odie Pixel, Fog, and Merlini for this match. Thank you very much, Shuri. Yes, game three now between PSG, LGD, and OG as we're seeing both teams changing it up once again. Different lineups, different strategies. We're seeing the out lineup from LGD that we've seen them do time and time again. And OG once again with a bit of that OG magic. Magic, it is the mid Topson Morphling. We've seen it before. We've seen sort of its ability once it hits level four to get these sort of kills in the 1v1 matchup. What, what do we like? Ooh, I like a lot of things coming out here. This Alchemist pick, he's got Aghanim, so plenty to be giving around. I also really like this Brewmaster pick with that Venge. The benefit that you can actually do with this, because it's not only just uh, about like this, it's like the team fights, you know, that Brewmaster wants to go in and start the fights for your team, which gives you a lot more liberty in the back, but you can actually set up some pretty decent solo kills with the Brew and just a wave of terror coming through. You actually amplify the damage a lot, and it's a way to protect their angle with this Brew. So it's a nice way that they set up their defenses as they prioritize their whole draft wall. On OG's side, They've, I mean, they've got a typical OG draft. It's a little bit unique, it's a bit different looking, but it's their style. The Morphling, I think, has been first banned against them in a couple of games. I've kind of forgotten, as we haven't seen it too much on the main save, but they are incredibly good with the zero. Yeah. I kind of forgot that it was out of, that was in Top Sun's repertoire. It's kind of cool that I see LGD also switching, then they're putting uh, Ames on the sweeper. So we've seen Chalice playing a lot, of course, now because the Brewmaster's pick, he's going to be playing that one, but a lot of times when they have played this Alchemist, they put that. Uh, Weaver off lane, and they picked a different type of carry. Decent amount of damage there to Anna done on the bottom lane as he's unable to take the rune. FY does grab that bottom one. Yes, the LGD will get both down there on the bottom lane. His chance is up. We'll be able to secure the second down there. Look at Jarex. Right he now. wants that courier. We saw him try earlier with the shaker. We'll see if he has a bit of a better time with this Lena movement. And how prepared are PSG LGD? He did do this before, as I say, on the Shaker. Are they watching that mid lane? They're it. not. He's got it. Jerax taking the Ring of Protection and Sal away from Somnus in that mid lane matchup. That's actually massive right now, because this is where Topsy can play and try to bully this Alchemist as he has very, very little regen. It's actually a very smart move when you're trying to play these, these heroes that want to lane dominate versus an Alchemist as soon as you get some levels on. And as Ben said, there's already been a lot of teams that have been very scared of the tops and Morphling. So we'll see how this mid lane goes. Obviously last game, Somnus on the Kunko was able to absolutely destroy Topson's uh, Invoker in that 1v1. And for the whole of the game, Topson had a very tough time. So we'll see if he's able to bring it back up and, and perform to the same level that he could do in game one. He does have a lot of armor to kind of deal with that physical damage. And looks like, yeah, maybe he is going to be out of luck for quite some time. Not really sure how he's supposed to get too much CS out of this at this point. Can we expect to sort of see uh, PSGOGD send someone else mid, or are you already sort of hurting the lane even more if you're having someone sit behind the Alchemist this early? I mean, I if someone dies, you can. Yeah. yeah. Other than that, not really. He actually just goes to base. So I'm just TP back to get some regen. That's pretty huge for OG right at the start. The power of the Courier Snipe. They've got to watch out for it, LGD, in these games. We know that Jarex likes to go for that rotation. He's still ahead in net worth, though, over the Morphling, uh, despite all that, just because of the bounty rules at the start. Just Alchemist. <laughs> and we'll see how these side lanes go. Is there, is there sort of a particular two-on-two -two here that you feel is going to have quite a difference? So we're going to see one of these side lanes really get ahead early? I really like the power of the Brewmaster versus the PL. It's just really annoying to play PL because you're going to get drunk and haze non-stop. You're going to get hit all the time. And you can't really counteract it because you've got these fire spirits on you constantly. So Anna, Anna already getting pressure. He's already used to Doppler with the dive. FY, he's got the damage on to Anna. And there's your first blood. As you're talking about how nice that lane is also top lane. LGD finding the kill here for Ame as they get on top of Jarek. So the mid lane may be suffering a little bit, but the side lanes, they're getting the kills, PSG LGD. Yeah, you can buy a stick as a PL, but not really going to be able to get too much CS. He's already getting harassed down heavily. 
I mean, Chalice didn't even go for the haze. He just went for the brawler right click build to just push him down because there's not really support here helping him. They know the lean is top. They know Chen has to wait for that first creep wave to spawn or first creep creature creeps to spawn up, and that actually does clip. And I guess what well, this is sort of the power having such a strong lane against the, the PL as well, right? We can expect no tell. He, he's sort of pressured to, to really hover around this area. It's very hard for him to make early movements, right? Yeah, he has to stand. Look at FY. FY is actually every single time rolling forward and blocking that hard camp. And oh. it's pretty low. But that's really important to do versus these Chen's. When you know it's a Chen trying to protect your safe laner, just non-stop block that camp. And they've even committed two sentries to open it up. Top lane. A bit of an attempt onto Jarex. Army backs away. The light strike array is there from Jarex down onto X Nova. As they'll keep the Venge pushed back. Turns with a wave of terror, but he's got the sick charges, X Nova. He lost his self. Jarex did. Lena, pretty low armor hero. We don't see her in the support role too often, but she's sitting at negative armor with that just level two wave of terror on her. Zame, bugs out onto Seb. Will not dive for it. Knows that Jarex has Light Strike Array back off cooldown. And that mid lane, of course, with the way that we saw it start continuing to go strongly in Topson's favor. He's getting revenge for, for sort of what we saw go the other way around in game two with Somnus having that sizable lead. This time it's Topson that's in charge. And it looks like at least No-Tail does have one of the big, uh, best creeps to work with, the Seder. He doesn't have access to the other camp because of that uh, Sentry Ward, but he also will get a troll. Topson's going to get unfortunate there with the rune spawn. It's going to be down on the bottom lane. Top lane again, set up onto Jarex with the magic missile. Can't even get the light strike out. The damage is too much from LGD as they go towards Seb at the same time down bottom. Chalice gets chased down by No-Tail and Anna. Seb will survive. But one for one. And obviously down bottom, OG getting that kill onto the core, onto Chalice. And getting that extra bit of money to Anna, who already, despite sort of the ag aggression, he's not suffering too much in CS on this bottom lane. He's, he's trading evenly with Farmer Chalice, as we can see. 23 for 5 on the PL, compared to the 23 for 1 on the Brewmaster. So important to get that, you know, that, that Seder creep like Ben was mentioning. mentioning. You just add that little more HP regen, it just solidifies your lane much harder. As we do have those bounties coming out, super important for LGD to get those, and OG to contest them, as there's the Alchemist in the game. See Anna already heading over to FY, but FY is able to grab it in time. Takes it before Anna's able to get his hands on it. And the collapse slow did connect as Jalice chases down Anna. They dive forward with FY as well. No tail. Can you do anything to get them off Anna? Able to rush off to the north. The creeps on the side. The fire spirit again though. FY with the perfect placement of the fire spirits getting the kill. We'll see no tail chase down FY here. Is there any way he can make it a ways? Seems to have that slightly favorable movement speed, but he's into the creep wave, will fall, so FY does go down in return, but we're really seeing FY just push this hero to the limits and cause a lot of issues for Anna. And I think Seb died on the top lane during yeah. that bounty skirmish too. There's just going to be so much contest there because of the Alchemist, especially when you're this far behind in lane. You really need those bounties to help get you back. Yeah, and the top lane, right, the, the Wyvern and Lina, you were mentioning how the low armor is there. They're both very low armor, so as soon as they do get hit up by any type of control, they just go. that damage is just... They die Very so quickly. Good. Yeah, I mean, he does have the ring of protection on the Lena, but I mean, that's just not enough. Especially with a swarm coming out, I presume that the Vengeful Spear is also going to get a medallion at some point in this game. Mid. So walking pretty deep forward into tower. They want to try to keep the siege creep alive. They want to put as much pressure on it in these first few minutes. So you're getting a decent amount of damage done at the same time up top, Arme. Looking at World Seb, Seven Jarex having to play a lot safer now. They've given their lives up a couple of times in this top lane. Zami gets more and more mid lane. No tail. He's actually going to sit a that Again, FY and comes in. Both creeps die as well. FY just got so much experience oh, in mid. As his alchemist is jungling freely. This oh. FY Phoenix looking to, to be off to a fantastic start from bottom lane to mid lane. I think they were really hoping to get that tower with the Chen creeps with that one siege creep so alive, but turns out in the worst possible way. And Seb also has an Aquila, so just really all out gunning for armor in this lane. So, with the smoke, we'll get a ward down. We'll have a bit more better information on the movements as FY will reveal himself to Jax, diving forward, playing aggressive, getting himself straight on top of him. Does get hit by the Light Strike Array, but he's chasing down Seb and Notel coming in for the side. They'll look towards Xnova, but Xnova knows there's no disable. He'll TP out. Another Light Strike from Jax is going to be missed as Arme jukes it out, but it doesn't matter. Topson chases down, gets the kill on Arme, and now zaps forward and bursts down FY as well. Topson with a small rotation away from the mid lane, picking up a double kill on, on top of already pretty much free fire that he's had in this mid lane for the first seven and a half minutes. It's level eight. Alchemist is 
almost hitting level 6. So we see that big advantage in particular from that courier sniper. And that's exactly what SVG was talking about with the style of morphing that he plays. He's not necessarily the late carry. He's out there to create space, put a lot of pressure on look, towers. And look at the damage he just hit to FY. He's already sort of FY leaving, losing two-thirds of his health. Yeah, Thompson's like just such a unique player, right? He has these different uh, ways to look at the game, and with this Morphling, he, he loves playing it like, kind of like that Rubik. You're just all about trying to steal spells, turn into other heroes, and use that benefit to put as much pressure as possible early. Fine's got to be careful there. The Penitence was on him. Thompson couldn't quite get in range for the burst as FY dives away. But this game as well, right, when you can sort of consider the Morphling, isn't there going to be a point where it, it's rather hard for LGD's lineup to actually kill a Morphling that's got a good head start? They don't really have any instant disables for him, so it looks like he should be able to pop yep. his attribute gain at any time. I think all the stuns are going to be projectile stuns. Yeah, Maybe the only Alchemist one gets a blink. Yeah, that's the big one that they'll have to worry about, right? Yep. But that's going to be a long time considering the start that maybe has had and this T1. Well, so, G, eight and a half minutes in here, taking that mid tier one tower. Topson, of course, still sitting at the top of the net worth. Look at OG's wards. They know they need to just not let this Alchemist jungle. Block the Ancients, block the Hard Camp, get vision of the other uh, jungle camps as well. Just try to keep tabs on this Alchemist at all times to keep the pressure going. And he's using a body block with the Seder Camp to block this. Yeah, look at this. On this bottom lane, they will find out the Primus split being used to set up to allow FY to come in and how offer his help for the cleanup. Another kill onto Anna. Top lane, Arme caught up by the Light Striker Ray. Do they have the burst? They don't. Arme is able to time lapse himself back to safety. Primal Split's gonna have a really big impact on this game, of course, versus the PL to remove those illusions with your Wind Panda, but also you can dispel the send back from the Chen as once we get to that point later on, which could become significant. You can also Cyclone the Cold Embrace yep. heroes too. There's a lot of things that you can do with the Brute this game. Get rid of the PL illusions, it's mm -hmm. tough. They have fun No-Tail top, X Nova and Army catching out No-Tail as No-Tail tried to come over into the jungle and find himself some creeps. They're spreading themselves very thin. They want to control the entire jungle of the Alchemist, but I don't think they can control both. So they get Army here. Army yet to have the time that's back online, but the Shikuchi does save him. At the same time, FY again getting the kills as he's in with the Supernova on top of Seb. Finds the wife. Two for two bounties. He's alright with that as they're a thousand away from that relic on a level 7 outpost. I mean, they don't have a vessel though on the side of OG. I think you really think you need a vessel to kill the Alchemist, especially with the Phoenix in the game. And I think Lena was the one that wanted to build one, but because she's had such a rough time, she doesn't even have her own yet. So, I mean, Alchemist does have a bad time, but so does everyone else, and PL's game is not particularly great. Charles, she's coming in the top there with his haste route, running down No-Tail, No-Tail. He's trying to get out the Light Stroke Array from Jerex, will not save him as Chalice has already done the damage and it does manage to get himself on top of FY because FY used the Supernova down bottom, doesn't have it back up. So Anna finishes off the Phoenix, goes back towards Chalice, Jerex finds the Light Stroke Array, again Chalice, he doesn't have Primal Split back but he has got back up in the form of Arme and X Nova. Anna still in the midst of it all, trying to look towards X Nova but Anna's been left alone, they know which one the real one is, Seb is there but the Winter's cast! Oh, he's actually going to be able to keep Anna alive for now, Anna turns with the Spirit Lance, they get the kill onto Chalice and a doppelganger down to the low ground, but Ame's quick with a chase with that Shikuchi. Looks towards Anna with a cold embrace from Seb, keeping Anna safe against the right click. The Shikuchi damage alone, not enough. X Nova trying to get in range for that stun, but Jerex, Light Strike comes out. They do get the kill on Anna, though, PSG LGD, but they'll lose X Nova for it. Ame has the Shikuchi away as well. Oh, great swap, though, coming in there, saving his core. In all time, Somnus just farming this right side of the map. Thompson is trying to do his damn best to stop. Maybe from getting these people's speed stacks up, but... Arme. If he can find himself a bit more here, Jarex does have the Laguna Blade available. Cold Embrace from Seb. Will allow Jarex to heal back up. They committed so many wards. OG has four wards on the map, and I still think maybe is going... You know, he ha already has his Relic, so I'm not exactly sure how effective it has, but they see him, but they can't really stop him because they just have so much pressure in the lanes. Still, his timing is going to be pretty decent. He is still below the Morphling in that worth it. Yeah, and Thompson's been farming very, very well and also looking for those aggressive plays. 95 last hits with 29 denies as he constantly is walking up onto those high grounds looking for some plays, but Jarex just <laughs> melts. Yeah, he was going for the D ward there, but the quick wrap around from PSG OGD catches him off guard. Bottom lane. 
TP's coming in as notes out. Was trying to put some pressure onto the tier one tower. Does have the back of a Thompson as Thompson come through. Looks at that FY, but FY gets the supernova in time. It doesn't matter. The attack speed from Thompson too good as he punches down the sun. They've got the Winter's Curse holding Arme in place. He does have time lapse, but the stone comes time. through. Thompson has the control. As he picks up the double kill. Thompson going up and up in this game. Great heroes to replicate. Yeah, he's gonna have so many options, honestly. We, I was trying to look through all of them, because I've seen him, he has taken uh, a few times, I've seen him take the morph targets allies too, and the morph duration when he's played it. He's all about just making those plays around the map. Yeah, I think stealing concoction is great, stealing Venge for that huge damage is also great. Weaver for the Shikuchi, there's just so many things that he can do. Yeah, and he can like, he has a lot of ways to like, if he does turn into like the Phoenix, he has, and the Weaver, he has so many ways to get in and out of the fights over and over again, and save his waveform. As the Radiance comes out at a pretty damn early timing, 13 minutes after getting just pushed to the jungle. Absolutely, yeah, considering the start the Sun has had, he's certainly recovered in that aspect. His bottom lane, it looks to set up onto Tops, and they do get the Magic Missile off before he starts to ship, but he's still able to do so after the stun wears off. He's building the HP him. up. Seb, can he do anything to help Thompson here? Thompson tries for the TP, but he won't make it. The damage from LTD enough to take him down. As now Seb, potentially in trouble too, as he looks to get himself back underneath the tower. Jarex goes for the light strike, right, but Arme keeps his distance. Seb with the self cold embrace. He's being sent back as well, but they kill him off in time. He's not getting home tonight, and neither's no tail, surely. The magic missile from X Nova. They've still got the primal split chasing down the Chen. The stun comes through. Light strike away from Jarex will not hold back LGD, as PSG LGD find three members of OG. Ooh. Close to getting a cyclone. No cigar. The overall team for an LGD is just a bit stronger. Even when they don't have their Alchemist getting combined, their format is very, very potent versus the format of OG. They need Topson to pretty much be alive and well inside of all those fights. Because the PL can't really get involved with this team yet until he's got that Diffusal Blade finished up. And he just seems very overwhelming as well from LG. They've got so many heroes just looking to get on top of sort of the, 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 the vulnerable heroes like this Lena, Lena, like the Chen on OG. You've got this Weaver getting on top of you with Shikuchi. You've got the Brew just charging in immediately. You've got FY diving on top of you. So many ways that they can exploit the vulnerabilities of OG's heroes. The Supernova comes out. Jerax tries to turn, but he's in trouble. Army's there with a the wraparound. Can they kill the Supernova in time? They can. Seb gets the final touch through. As they get the trade, X Nova's there as well, but so's Thompson, so X Nova's got to be careful. Zip four from Thompson, he's got the physical damage here. One more touch will do it. There's the zap, the stun, buying time for him to close the gap. X Nova's still alive into the trees, but he'll come back out and Thompson will find it. And two for two bounties, so No-Tail is at least prioritizing that, but No-Tail is actually only level five in this game, and the next lowest level is level eight. So he's not really contributing too much into the fights with Sidus Creeps at all. Doesn't have that heal available to help them either. As Somnus continues just to farm and farm, and the Blink Dagger is, of course, that next choice fight of that lockdown that they could actually catch on that Morphling if he's right on top of it. And a lot of pressure will be on Seb then on this, this Wyvern to sort of make the big plays with the Winter's Curse, with the Cold Embrace, when they have this Alchemist threat just jumping on top of hero after hero with the concoction as top lane, no tail. Been found by Arme. TPs will come through. There's no way to save him. No tail gets taken out by Arme. Thompson. Turning into the Weaver there, seeing if he could chase down a support kill in return, but PSG LGD, they're already out of this top lane. Really is such a lack of control in this game coming out, also from OG's lineup. They have to set up. We've seen them do this before, of course, in the group stages with the Wyvern, but they're really going to need some big curses coming out for Seb in the mid-game soon. It's been really tough for them because LGD's heroes are just way more tanky. Yeah. Well, the double sentries. They so get the vision for the Winter's Curse, they have that setup available, Jarrett's clarity up so he has enough mana for the Laguna Blade. Gets the kill and now X Nova tried to come in to look for some sort of a swap play, he'll go for the TP out, won't make it. They'll get to him a Chalice, in with the counter play, jumps in with a clap, burst down Jarrett's but they're on top of him. He's out of mana, he can't cast the Primal Split, he's trying to run himself away but they chase him down! OG get three! That Diffusal Blade came in right on time. Looked like he didn't have enough mana to cast it, to, to finish it. Yeah, he j jumps in, gets the clap, and then there's just too many illusions that hit him really quickly. One each, because you heard him do the noise, too. Yeah. He's like, three of them, and then just stops because of the mana burn. And they're into the pit now as well. 16 minutes in, still the net worth, standing very even due to this Somnus Alchemist still sitting at the top. But Thompson keeping himself very close to the farmer, Somnus, as this Roshan will go the way of OG. Thompson grabs the Aegis and will continue to have a very good start to this game at 17 minutes. I believe he has a full Manta style on top too with that Dragonlance. This is a very, very strong Morphling. And with this Manta too, he can play around even easier. That Venge stun is going to be a lot harder to land, so you disjointing the Alchemist is a different thing, but versus that Venge can definitely work out. 
Yeah, you mentioned OG not having that much control, but I think LGD are going to have control issues versus this Morphling in particular. Yep. On bottom lane, FY. To get that final fire spirit, so Jarex will be able to earn himself back up. But we're seeing sort of just the solo potential of FY going around the map with this spirit vessel. It's a very dangerous map for, for sort of the supports of OG to be out on alone. Do you like that Jarex is going to be just going back for the Yule Scepter rather than finishing the spirit vessel, man? I think spirit vessel is just really important for them. But at the same time, Topslin is in the back line and he's not really going to get that much support from Alina. So as long as he stays alive, he can maybe do enough damage to kill this Weaver like we just saw. So. Well, it looks like maybe is going to start to try, try and join the fight. Thompson but. tries to get in here. Does start to attribute shift into the, to the strength, so X Nova and Chalice will both back away. He's putting up the pressure on, though. He's forcing back two heroes of LGD, but it, LGD seems okay with this. I mean, their Alchemist is farming, their Weaver's still farming top as well. Yeah, he does have that blink, but let's see which time he deems is the perfect moment for him to go in. As mid lane Chalice pops the Primal Split, finds himself no tail, as Sen Topson up into the air, Xnova's coming in from the side. Can they get more members of PSG LGD in to look for the fight though? Topson's gonna be fine. As he's pretty much up to full HP down bottom at the same time, the eggs actually come out from FY as they're beating into it. Can they kill him off in time? They can't! FY gets the Supernova successfully off. He's playing around with the three of them here. Jarex tries for the TP out. Oh, but he takes down in base! FY gets the kill on Jarex and he gets the kill on Seb! FY! What? <laughs> He's level 12 so early that they couldn't actually kill off. Oh my lane. goodness. Level 13 now off the back of that one in mid lane. Thompson turns into Chalice, jumps in with a clap. The swap's there, but it won't save him. Doesn't destroy the right click as Thompson. Claims Chalice is life. Maybe they can find more as well. They'll close in onto an over. The stun from Thompson. Buying time for him to come in back into Chalice's brew. He goes and a quick slap finishes off another. Somnus had no interest in even trying to help his teammate. Just continues to farm the creeps, doesn't pop this chemical rage, nothing. Ame either, just putting that pressure on that top. Yeah, I think he wants to try and surprise Topson, but not when he has the Aegis. It's bottom lane, Anna, getting the space to put some pressure on. At the same time, up top, we saw Ame starting to do a decent amount of damage to the top tier one tower. Chalice, finally having that Midas online. It's top lane, Jarex and Seb, let's see if they can find some sort of a setup. They don't They do, in fact, sorry, have the Winter's Curse and the Laguna Blade, so they can look for that burst combination if Arme steps forward too far. Hmm. That Midas pickup seems pretty... I, I actually kind of like it, because he can keep his levels up, because he's the big playmaker on this team to make space for that Weaver and the Alchemist still, so he wants to be able to stay getting boosted up in experience in particular, not wanting to show in farming lanes. And the stun actually connects on Anna, keeping up bottom. At the same time up top, Arme's trying to go towards Jerex, but Jerex has the back of a set. It's a half kill for Arme to find. The Johanna God comes out, and Anna, he's falling, he's down, he gets taken out. They get on top of him, they find the PL, PSG, LGD. Can they find anything more? No tail? Being chased here by Somnus. Somnus will turn his attention towards the Mug Golems, continue to keep those stacks high of the Grievel's Greed. As Thompson instantly looks to put the pressure on mid, trying to draw PSG LGD's attention away from that chase down bottom. LGD is just doing an excellent job of fighting away from the Morphling, away from this Aegis, because they know they can't kill him twice. It's just simply not worth it for them. They'd rather go for the squishy targets. All these supports are super easy to kill on the side of OG. Thompson? Split. Yeah, it does force the split out here from Chalice. TPs are coming through as well. Topson does have Seb close by. The stun comes out for the Primal Split. There's the cold embrace from Seb. He's got that ether lens, that extra range to get in. FY's coming in from the side with the Sunray, that percent damage. Topson pops the Manta. He's still fine. This Primal Split struggling to deal with the Topson. As Topson. He's fine. In fact, now he's looking to fight back. Goes straight in onto Chalice. There's the swap. The Winter's Curse holds the two of them at the side. Thompson looks to Chalice. The missed charge. Keep it Chalice alive, but the split to Blast is there. They get Chalice. Thompson back into the brew. He's got to be careful. The cold embrace from Seb's there. Healing him up. Thompson back into the morphing form. He's fine. Somnus has now turned up to the fight, though. With the Radiance, chases down Seb. Jarex tries the life track with the sidelines. F5 with the supernova. Thompson, he wants to try to take down the sub, but the Kukoc is there for Somnus. They'll get the Aegis out of his hands. They do lose. The, the, the Aegis, can they kill him a second time? They're on top of him. He's He's having a waveform down to the bottom. Anna's there as well. On the PL, ready to try and offer his attention to the fight. Thompson teeping away. They have no way to cancel it. Thompson will escape. But overall, PSG LGD able to take a successful fight there. FY just getting off that supernova as it looked like Jarex was about to finish it. But Jarex, he was killed just in time by LGD to keep FY safe. And they got a stun out of the Morphling. He went for a build without any Lincoln, so he's actually quite vulnerable to this Alchemist stun. Maybe doing a really good job of just waiting for that perfect moment. The Curse was down, most of the spells were down, and uh, Morphling's Replicate was also down. I think that's super important to wait for as the Alchemist in this game. 
So what do you think of the Brewmaster going for Ags? Normally I it's what, like Radiance first, and then maybe if someone else has Radiance, you go for Auras, but he's going for the Ags, at least in his quick buy. I can't imagine he finishes that, right? He's it's, got an Alchemist. He's on got his an team. Alchemist. But I think we uh I think Benjes is more important. Yeah, there is a lot of good Aghanim upgrades yeah, on LGD's lineup. I, I think that's he's actually true. the worst of the other four. That actually is, that's a good point. Maybe that's why he just wants to try to get it at this timing so that he can use his use his abilities while he's in his split as well. He's really good about using this spell. I think that's what separates the good bruise versus the very, very awesome bruise. Yeah. He's just I don't know. I, I you just don't see eggs early yeah. that that much. Maybe because the auras. The thing is, like he's got a venge, but the venge isn't really farming. We've seen the venges go flats a lot of the times. But with the brewmaster, you you think he might go for those type of auras in this game, but yeah, I thought like venge would go more like solar and glimmer, and mm -hmm. then the brewmaster would go for the flats and AC. Yeah, that's generally what we see. Uh. He's still saving his gold though. He hasn't actually bought any of the components. Yeah. No side chalice straight on top of no tail no tail pops the hand of the god but the primal split is out they're ready to fight here lgd we'll see if og can get themselves out of it no tail's gonna fall anas charges in straight away on top of dover and with the diffuser blade he's doing a lot of damage to subray from fy though keeping it alive but there's the counter play thompson giving some sun on sun action here as he dies for it does get caught out by the concoction but he's back into the morphing form army coming in for the side they pop the supernova but anna straight on top of the end can he kill off their fight in time no he cannot the supernova successful and it gets caught out by the stun and again psg lgd coming out on top of these fights as fy sort of against all odds he keeps getting the supernova off did he did he miss a few times because the radiance it looks like i think i saw a couple misses coming in there it, I mean, FY is just playing out of his mind. Yeah, this, this is one of the best Phoenixes I feel we've seen here at TI. It's bottom lane, Arme. Look at the Seb. Underneath the tower. The Chalice is coming in. Do they want to die for this? They certainly do. Chalice jumps in. As the TPM will be cancelled, Seb will be left to die. It's PSG LGD get away with the kill. 32 to 19 now, favoring LGD in a 7k net worth advantage. Somnus now climbing up a healthy 5k ahead of the Morphling's farm. Seems like LGDs, every single time they want to take the fights, they have their ultis available. They have the, tr the, the Bruce split, they also have that uh, Supernova, and they're doing a great job of protecting it. While on, on OG, their team fight's not as great. It's a lot harder for them to actually get all those spells up. They need the curse to be very perfect for the Lina to get the follow-ups. And originally, we thought that Lina would be a pretty good counter to the Phoenix. You know, long range here with a lot of attack speed, but when she's thrown in the support position, she really just can't survive long enough to do enough damage with this egg. And it's been popping every single fight. As four bounties go the way of PSG LGD with that Alchemist. They want to find Topson here with this jump concoction. Can they find it in time to Topson with the Mansa Sal and he's out of there? Imagine Missile Connect. Oh, he did start to morph. He's, in fact, he's gone into the bench. That's going to cost him his life. As he morphs into Exnova, doesn't have that attribute shift going, of course, anymore, as they can burst him down and get Topson off the map for 70 seconds. That's such a big momentum sweep for LGD. They claim four bounties immediately right after that. They kill the most oh, important the Does go for the illusion here. Anna's still alive for now, but they find the magic missile. There's the Winter's Curse. Seb trying to buy the time for Anna to get out there, and it will be enough. Anna standing in for the side. Does he want to go back in? FY dives in. Supernova's out. Cold Embrace is actually going to cause issues for Big Daddy Notel as he's stuck underneath the egg. So I'm just on the side of the BKB. He's going to be able to keep himself alive against the defusal blade. Damage of Anna. Anna on the retreat. Doppelganger's back up in a second. See if there's any way Somnus can try and chase as Anna goes to the TP, he's ticking down to the Radiance, the Earth's on him, but he's back in base. He will be fine, the TP off just in time, so Anna will live. But again, they're getting away with so much now in these fights, we're starting to see Somnus really getting involved in each and every one of these team plays, and they're breaking further and further ahead, PSG LGD, as Arme looks to finish off another tower up top as well. Yeah, there's just such an overwhelming amount of team fight now for LGD in comparison. The curse is there, it's decent, but they don't have a follow-up. The Lina's not able to get in position for it. And Topson was dead the whole time. They, that, they took a fight when Topson was dead at the very, very start of the fight. And the, yeah, the curse was very, very good, but absolutely no follow-up. And Ana, he can only do so much at this point. His net worth is roughly half the outs. And, and he does commit. He's got it complete now. 26 minutes in. That's got to be, as you say, something that we don't see every day on Brewmasters in this meta. It's pretty cool with the with the Earth Panda getting the Thunderclap too. It's going to be easier mm -hmm. for them to find the real PL in a lot of situations. Kind of neat. Being able to Drunken Haze, perhaps, yeah. when the egg comes out. And the, it does offer a lot of value. The problem is, it's generally just too hard to use. It's it like very tough. Three more spells, or two more spells, you already have enough to worry about. Well, 
Somnus. He's in towards the pit. He jumps in, gets on top of No Tail. Cold Embrace will buy him some time, but the rest of LGD is on their way over. No Tail's gone. As they were looking towards the pit now. But OG's got to be careful around this area as PSG LG will be more than happy to fight with the Sun nearly back online. Concoction from Thompson on towards Alme, but he has the Lincoln Sphere. Time lapses to the side. This is this is a very hard area for OG to take a fight around this rush pit versus this Phoenix who's already been getting supernovas off non-stop. Has a full Shiva's guard on top too. Oh almost level goodness. 18 to and a full Oct3 now for the Alchemist. They're smoking, they're looking for a fight. Level 20 on Alchemist too for that concoction talent, or the, the damage on the concoction. And everyone's trying their best to help help with the egg. Oh. They, they can swap heroes out, they can try and stun them as much as they can. And with the Shivas, I, I don't I, if they commit for the egg, I think they all die. I think so. Especially if he hits level 18. He's so close it's to it. gonna be three more hits, and oh. they've already been suffering to really take that one down. The courier at least kills uh, the courier gets killed there by some PL illusions, of course, for OG. Can OG get towards the bit? Somna straight in on top of them. They drive the man to start dodge, but it still connects. They do get the Winter's Curse down on top of X Nova. So X Nova gets beaten down by Somnus. They'll get the Life Strike off, but Jarex is dead. Tops is on top of him. He's diving away back into the more form. Arme's hot on the chase. They've left behind Anna as Anna taken out. LGD, they've found three. They're looking for more. Arme continue to chase down Thompson. You've got Somnus finding seven on the side. Cold Embrace is only going to buy him some time as Somnus has another concoction out and ready to go. PSG LGD finding four. And OG just seemingly unable to deal with the pressure, the pace that they're playing with. As they're into the pit, and there's nothing that OG can do about this one. 18k advantage. That's exactly what Fong was talking about. You can't fight that around the pit. They they were clumped up way too much. You'll see you'll start to stun, but it also just hit the morphling, and that, that's the way you start the fight, with your morphling getting very long duration stunned by Al. And they didn't even have to use the, they didn't even use the supernova. It's still available. The curse came to come out onto the vengeful spirit, so they killed the bench, but it doesn't really do too much for them. Is this game really slipping out of OG's hands? Did you see the blue axe? Did he use all those spells? I saw <laughs> I saw a clap. I saw an extra clap. I don't know if I saw a drunken brawler. Alright, drunken haze. It's very hard to skill that in the midst of everything. I definitely saw a clap. Though. That's a crazy item choice to go for though. I never would have thought to go axe at this point. But it, I mean their forte is team fight, and OG seems to be like, oh yeah, maybe we can win team fight. If they outplay him in some sense, but Chalice has just been destroying them with his with his ult. The PL also can't do anything. They can find out which one it is almost immediately with the help of the brew. Yeah, I mean that's true. Ana just Ana ran in and just died instantly in that last fight. He could not control oh, the team at all. Oh, he's a little bit deep here. Just get the life strike onto Ame, but FY with the Sunray just lasering him down. Gets the kill at the same time, no tail. Falling tops it. He's trying to fight back here, but there's a lot of backup from PSG. He does manage to burst down X Nova. But Chalice, Arme, and FY, they're hot on the chase for Thompson. He's trying to retreat. Is there any way his teammates can save him? It looks to be pretty much alone. He'll turn with the stun onto Chalice, but Chalice eats the cheese. Thompson's up to the high ground. Goes for the TP, the Sunray. Somnus in with a bleed, finds the kill. He's just, every time too, he just gets Spirit Vessel, and then Spirit Vessel, and then Spirit Vessel again. FY every single time you go to find him. And they have so many ways to close the gap on him now. Oh, so they do. That's advantage. And Somnus, he's starting a, a little earlier sort of on the Agnum purchases than we've seen from some some of the Alchemists. Well, I said he, he, he is incredibly farmed across the moment. 27,000 net worth on the Alchemist. The he's first Ag's nearly on the way. He's 607. There's nothing threatening him anyway. Might as well just give some other help to his teammates. And Thompson forced to buy back now as LGD up to the high ground onto this tier 3 tower at the same time Anna up top will find a tier 2 but mid lane Somnus goes for the stun onto Thompson the tier 3 tower being beaten down by Somnus the primal split as well from Chalice helping them push onwards the Cyclone up Seb on the side army FY looking towards No Tail No Tail's got the Chen falls as LGD claim themselves the mid melee racks as they'll now start to back away top lane Anna He's hiding. X Nova's coming. DP's coming for as well. We'll see if they can find Anna. The magic missile juked off nicely. The Manta style dodge from Anna's there. He's they into the he's trees, there, but Ame. He's hunting. The doppelganger down. Won't remove the bug. He goes for the TP out. Got anywhere to stop it. They have. X Nova with the swap. Cancelling the TP. Anna's stuck up here. Ame will continue to play around with him as Anna can doppelganger around. As Anna does actually manage to find it over there with the illusions, but he'll pay with his life as LGD. They catch the rat. They get Anna after Anna desperately tried to put the pressure on on that top lane whilst LGD were pushing down mid. But LGD, they get both. The Brax and the successful defense. And now an Aghanims comes out and he gives it to the Weaver. They, are, they haven't killed this Alchemist once. How will they do it with an Ag? Mine coming in on the back lines too. 
OG having 26 deaths between their two supports, suffering so much in this game to be able to find good positions as there's so much team fight from LGD. And pick off too. Pick off. FY, he killed No Tail, I think, just his first two spells and a vessel. So they can burst down Chalice. And they've got the setup with the Winter's Curse. Somnus is coming in for the sideline. Look, they just run the Laguna Blade. Comes through, it's enough. Chalice gone. Can they get anything more? Thompson turns his attention towards Somnus. Somnus pops the man to start. No tail. He's in trouble. Arme's on top of him. With that Mionis, so much damage coming out for the Weaver. Somnus jumps forward. He's on top of Thompson. Thompson has the Alchemist form at the moment. He's cooking up his own concoction here. As Seb being chased, he gets himself into the trees. Cold embraces out. X Nova's there on the high ground. Magic Missile. The magical nukes and up. The blink out for Jax. He's surrounded. Arme goes towards the Shrine, Jarex desperately trying to heal up, but the damage from Arme will be too much. They lose another in mid lane. FY just beaming down the middle with the Sunray, chasing back Seb. Thompson's down for a hundred seconds without that buyback. And Somnus, he's into the base, diving in with a blink counter, trying to fight back and push them away. But the mid racks get cleaned up by LGD. They're onto the tier four towers. They know that Thompson doesn't have buyback here, and they're abusing that as much as they can. I think this is got to be one of the best Phoenix performances I've seen from FY. He just bought so much space for Somnus and is just wreaking havoc all across the map. He, he killed two heroes by himself <laughs> yeah. earlier when they were, that was, yeah, FY definitely having an all-star performance And again, the supernova by the base, they are going to try and kill it. Can they kill it off? Can Big they, time they, they can't! They just can't kill the sun! As a buyback from no -Tail comes out, but the H is exposed. no -Tail immediately dies after buying back. And Winter's Curse is there onto FY. Will it kill him off? FY is still alive. FY, he'll finally fall. The Dragon Slayer Jarex finishes him off. He'll buy back those. He knows this is LGD's chance to claim this game three. Somnus continue to be down on the edge of the light strike comes out. The Agony was timed. That's from Arme. Keeping Somnus safe. He gets a concoction out into Jarex. He's looking to dive towards the fountain as OG is still able to play around it. But the damage from Somnus. In those challenges as well with the Primal Spirits, they beat down on the edge of PSG LGD looking to close this one up and then game three goes to PSG LGD as another pretty smooth and solid performance comes out from them. FY Phoenix absolutely.